Good morning, and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring, and that's my fine wife, Bev, on this tremendous Thursday. Mm. Honey, you know, there are good ideas, and then there are... God ideas. That's exactly right. So the question is, how can we tell the difference? Here are seven ways to recognize a God idea. First, pray. If you feel peace, it's his idea. The key to developing a peace factor in your life is to know the word and pray. If you don't have confidence in the word of God, you'll never have peace. Why worry about situations when you can pray the word and give it all to God? Let him deal with it. Praying with confidence in the word is the antibiotic for disease of a worried mind. How about that? I need to say that again. Yes, you do. Praying with confidence in the Word is the antibi- antibiotic for the, de- for the disease of a worried mind. And as I've said for years, if you worry about situations, it means you don't trust God. Gain strength, comfort, and yes, peace with John 14, 27. 14, 27, the classic Amplified Bible. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated, cowardly and unsettled. You know, we used that scripture recently, but there must be a reason the Lord's led us back to it again. Particularly the last sentence in that verse. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful, cowardly, and unsettled. And that is so true. Second, does it line up with the word? God will never give you an idea, a directive, a new thing, or any word from him that conflicts with his word. It just will never happen. And how can we be so sure? Well, in Mark 3, 24, Mark 3, verse 24 in the Classic Amplified says, And if a kingdom is divided and rebelling against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. God will never lead you to do something that does not line up with his word. You will never receive an unction of the Holy Spirit that is outside the word of God. And if there is a misdirection involved, you can rest assured it is not God. And one more thing that we feel stirred to say, and we like to call it the one-two punch. To know, I mean to know, if your ideas line up with the word. Number one, don't think like the world thinks. In Proverbs 4, verse 23, Proverbs 4, 23 in the New Century Version, it says, be careful what you think. Because your thoughts run your life. That's a strong scripture. It is. Proverbs 4.23 is uh, is one that you need to read in a number of translations. Just let it soak in. But if you want to know if your idea is a God idea, then the words of Roman 12.2, the words of Roman 12 verse 2 in the New Living Translation, you need to take it to heart. It says, let God transform you into a new person. By changing the way you think. Hallelujah. And number two, when you think like he thinks, you'll always know if you have a God idea. Third, is the idea in line with your God-given vision? If you don't have a God-given vision for your for your future, keep pursuing God until you realize the one that he's been trying to give you. God is not hiding his vision from your future, playing some sort of spiritual hide and seek. If we don't have a vision somewhere we've lost or or, are ignoring the revelatory insight that God is trying to give us, Habakkuk 2, 2 comes clearly to mind. And the Lord said, write the vision and make it plain that he that... Run, that he may run, that readeth it. Let me start that again. 
And the Lord said, Write the vision and make it plain, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision shall speak, it shall surely come, it will not tarry. The contemporary English version of that particular verse says, Then the Lord told me, I'll give you my message in the form of a vision. Write it clearly enough to read at a glance. Our vision must be written down very clearly. If we, you know, if you're asking yourself what your vision should be, then ask yourself this. What lives passionately in your heart? Whatever you love, God has placed in your heart for a reason. Keep renewing, reviewing your vision until you've made it as clear and as precise as possible. Fourth, <clears throat> assuming that you're married, are you both in agreement? One of the craziest things any Christian can ever do is not to be in agreement with their spouse about a God idea. I mean, two believers should be. I understand being married to somebody who is not a believer. But if you are in agreement as walking the Christian life together, then you should be in agreement on any God idea. In Genesis 2.24, Genesis 2 verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. The contemporary English version of Genesis 2.24 says, that's why a man will leave his own father and mother. He marries a woman and the two of them become like one person. Please notice that the scripture says the husband and wife become like one person. If you're one person and you don't agree, it's a spiritual house divided against itself. In Ephesians 5.31, Ephesians 5, verse 31, it also says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. One flesh is like being, becoming one person, and you may be working on it, but the key is to be working on it. Because in Amos 3, 3, Amos 3, verse 3 in the New Living Translation, it says, Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? And, you know, I know somebody is saying, and I understand, but Brother, you know, Brother Harold, Sister Bev, my spouse is a heathen and not interested in the things of God or achieving the success he's ordained for us. And this is often a very unfortunate situation. But God, hallelujah, but, but God. God can help you and direct you. And it may take some dedication on your part about what you say and how you do and how you act. But God will give you the godly response to your situation. He can, you know, forgive your mistakes if you got bound up along the way. But he can also make some things happen because he is always there for you. But the bottom line is your spouse needs to be in agreement with you as much as possible. And if you're single, then follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Fifth. God will never tell you to do something that causes confusion. Our Heavenly Father is a God of order. Confusion is the devil's anointing. Mm. Peace and courage, where confusion divides, drives. If you feel driven, stop, because the enemy is in your camp. From the first scripture till the last, God brought order out of chaos and confusion. Read the first three verses of Genesis. Where you find sin, you find confusion. James 3.16, 316 James. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. That is a very insightful scripture. God will give you ideas to bring order, but he will never give you an idea to create what he hates, confusion. Well said. Six, get confirmation from someone in your inner circle. There might be, I mean, there's always going to be somebody that you just kind of develop a relationship with, you know, that, that thinks and believes and likes to talk Jesus with you. So who forms your inner circle? I mean, is it your best friend at work, people in the neighborhood, somebody you grew up with, those you played, you know, Pick sports, up with. sports with or something or had a Pilates class with or somebody at church. 
but name the people that you consider in your inner circle and how many people are there? Maybe one, two, five, seven? What qualifies a person to be in your inner circle other than familiarity? What does the word of God say about your inner circle? Jeremiah 23:18. Jeremiah 23:18 in God's word translation says this. Who is in the Lord's inner circle and sees and hears his word? Who pays attention and listens to his word? There you go. Inside insight. Inside insight. <laughs> it's true. If, yeah, it's true. If your inner circle is comprised of people who listen, pay attention, and act on the word of God, then you have somebody, or maybe even a small group, in which you could share your ideas. And that's kind of how you decide who is really in your inner circle. But let's just share even a, a basic medical fact. <clears throat> Excuse me. Everybody has a brain, and whether or not they use it, now that's another matter, but we all have one. And every born-again believer has the mind of Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 2.16, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16. And yes, every believer does have the mind of Christ, whether or not they use it. Now, that's another totally different matter. But you're looking for someone who has a like mind, whose desire is to do what God would have them do. Hallelujah. Seventh, when God gives you an idea, it will not go away. God gave you one of his ideas, not just for you to play with, tell your friends about. Know that God gave you a creative idea for you to do something with it. You know, honey, I'm not sure who said this next quote. Frankly, I wish I had. Nevertheless, it's powerful. Here it is. God gives you his spiritual ideas, and in turn, they give you daily supplies. Hallelujah. See, it's up to us to provide daily nourishment for his idea. We're the one for whom it will grow and multiply. How do you provide nourishment? Well, seven words. Read your Bible. Do what it says. Hallelujah. When when God gives us an idea... He expects us to use it, to do it. God doesn't mind if we ponder, consider, reflect, pray, or meditate, as long as we didn't get up and do it. And and he's not looking for excuses from you or for you to blame someone else. It's why you cannot do what God has asked you to do. You can have a God idea, but it also must be in God's timing or it will be a failure. In life, timing is critical. We need to understand God's timing in fulfilling our destiny. And we also need to move on God's idea. Yes, and I see another teaching in all of that. God's timing. That's it. That's exactly right, baby. Hallelujah. Go to heraldherring.com if you've enjoyed the teaching up at the top where it says, sow a seed. Ask God what seed he'd have you sow. Do what he says. That's all we ever ask. And until tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.